Mister, excuse me, can I have this? Thank you. Good morning everyone, it's Kelly here, and today is an update video on what's going on. I've been pretty vacant for a couple days just with everything going on with this guy um, that I gotta update you guys on. So, when we got back from Louisiana, I picked up this beautiful little puppy named Finley. He's a golden retriever, and I have been looking forward to this moment for a very long time. Um, he definitely is a puppy, but he does have some health concerns that I wasn't aware of uh, prior to getting him, and there wasn't really anything they could tell exactly um, when he was so little. It just kind of came out when he got a little bit older. He is 11 weeks right now, and he is getting into an alligator school. Hi, Finley. Oh my gosh. He's notorious for walking straight up to the camera and hitting it with his nose. So let me get started. Long story shortened. I'm gonna try. Ow! Jeez, my pinky. <laughs> He's got some sharp little teeth. One moment, I have to discipline him. Finley, no. Okay, so where to begin? Um, I've been pretty distant lately with YouTube and filming because, as some of you guys know, my family dog Jazzy has battled with seizures for 11 going on 12-ish years and it's just been really hard um, just watching her kind of suffer through the seizures and not only the seizures but the medication. Um, now seizure medication is pretty hardcore, phenobarbital, Keppra, potassium bromide, um, she's on all three of them as she gets older. Um, medicine just keeps doubling up because she's gaining weight and she's getting older and her body's getting acclimated to medicine and it's hard, um, really hard. Um, if I if I had another epileptic dog again, where you know one or two seizures is you know okay, but I mean when they're having like they're a real seizure dog, I can't do it again. But not that Finley has seizures. Um, I prayed and prayed and prayed that when I got a dog, it would be just really healthy. I would put it on the most healthiest, pristine diet, exercise, everything like that. So, anyways. We get back from Louisiana. If you guys haven't checked out my Louisiana videos, they're actually pretty good. Same with Lou Gabe's. Um, it was a pretty awesome trip. I mean, we got massive alligator gar, and um, we went bow fishing, and rod and reel, and we went shrimping, and like, we did everything we could within a week there. So with Finley. Um, so I took Finley to the doctor, or to the vet, I should say, uh, a week after having him, and he's drinking water. Excuse me. You guys are gonna see in a minute what I'm about to do and I'm gonna explain why. I'm gonna let him drink though. All right, that's enough. Okay. Finley has mega esophagus. I've never heard of it before until now. It's where his esophagus does not work properly, where um, the muscles in the esophagus don't push food and water down into the stomach. Therefore, if he eats or drinks, I have to hold him or put him in a chair so gravity can do the work. Now it's not technically the worst thing that can happen, but it's very not very good either. Um, and a one vet was telling me that you know if she wouldn't judge if I did put him down uh, when I was at the vet uh, four days ago. So I just took Fedley to the emergency vet because he hasn't been keeping down food, but yet he can't regurgitate it either. And he has mega esophagus where the muscles in his esophagus aren't, aren't working properly. I'm just really heartbroken right now. This really freaking sucks. So I'm gonna go get a, um, another opinion uh, from Gabe's vet and go from there but it's not looking good and I was in the middle of editing um Phil Finley's introduction video to my channel too and I've had him for about a week now and I've already fallen in love with this guy and oh it just sucks and I just know it's you know mother nature and things happen but 
it's just so weird because I feel like everything that led up to me getting him was like meant for, like everything happens for a reason type thing and then now I'm dealing with this situation and it just gives me flashbacks to dealing with Jazzy and it's just like I can't have another dog just be so medically messed up and another vet was like well he can go on medication medication is there's like three different pills three times a day yada 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 and I'm like I can't I can't do medication again it was just a very very upsetting day for me so I kind of cut it short because I, I could barely even talk to the camera and I wanted to somehow film an update for you guys about what was going on because I honestly I didn't really know when I was gonna post the next another video just I was so distraught and heartbroken and just like I didn't know what to do so my plan is now is he's a puppy he comes home he plays he runs around you know he acts like a puppy and I'm like I can't just go take this dog to the vet like to get him put down like it just seems crazy because like everything with him is good but his stinking esophagus you know it'd be different if he was like lethargic like on the ground like not no appetite not moving like then I would understand but like he's literally a full-on puppy it looks as healthy as can be I mean he's a little skinny due to the ME which is mega esophagus um, so I'm trying to fatten him up as much as I can but I do have to feed him smaller meals a day um, more frequently throughout the day so <sighs> little buddy so I'm going to let him live his best life um, one thing with mega esophagus is they are very prone to getting aspirated pneumonia which is the potential quote-unquote uh, killer of the disease. So I'm just, like like you guys just saw when he drank water, I immediately just picked him up. That way the water can go down to his stomach so he doesn't regurgitate it and it goes into his lungs. Uh, same with food. And I'm just gonna try my best to keep him healthy. Now he could live 90 days or he could live eight years, you know, or more. You just don't know. Um, but the one thing I'm not doing is I'm not putting him on any medication. I can't do it again, so. That's my final decision. It took me probably a few days to really just kind of come to terms with it. And I'm okay. I know, I love you. I'm gonna get back to Finley in just a minute, but I wanna show you guys my pet turkey that has blossomed into a turkey. Look how big she is now. And it's definitely a hen. She is a she. My chickens are still punks. You know, I do let them out in the yard. I actually, I let the turkey out in the yard too. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do let the turkey out in the yard too with the chickens, but we're actually about to leave to head to the Keys right now. Key West, I'm super excited. We had to push our trip up a couple days due to weather. This weekend's supposed to be really bad. Um, but here we go. Check out Turkey. Turkey. Hello. Hi, gorgeous. I mean, you're a little fugly, but you're gorgeous in my eyes. There's Finley. He's like, can I get in there? Finley is obsessed with eating chicken and turkey poop, by the way. I mean, he is pretty much double the size of the chickens. <clears throat> and the chickens still pick on him. Mostly Biscuit, this chicken right here. She, I have popped her a few times, actually. <laughs> but yeah, that is a turkey. She is doing well and thriving. She's so cool, too. I love her. I'm gonna go ahead and bring Finley to my dad's house right now so we can watch him for a few days. Check out my papaya plants. Look how huge they are. If you guys seen a couple of my last videos, they were so tiny. Um, so I'm packing up the truck now. Ooh, there you go. Get in the house. Come on. Get in the house. Good boy. Good boy. Nope. Took your food away. All right. So, like I said, last minute we're running around. Gabe and the boys are getting their hair cut. I'm gonna take Finley to my dad's come back, pack up all the dive gear. We're gonna meet Dibs down in Key West and do a quick little diving fishing trip. Um, like I said, this weekend's supposed to be super, super bad, of course. So that's that. I'm gonna get on the road. Um, when I'm driving, I'll explain to you guys everything that went down at the vet and go from there. 
You good boy. You good boy. You are a good boy. You are. I love you. I love you so much. You have to stay in the truck, baby. Fueling up. I have his crate back there with a little gate just in case my dad needs it. Oh, excuse me. You have to stay in the truck or you'll get hit by a car. So, let's see, where to begin? Redneck and Finley do get along. I mean, in the mornings, Redneck's a little cranky and the dog like wants to play. He wakes up at 12.30 to go potty, 4.30 to go potty, and then by 6 a.m. or 5.45 a.m., he is wide awake. So I've been kind of an early bird lately because of him. Um, yeah, so about seven days after I had him, I was feeding him two meals, um, a little on the larger side because I'm trying to fatten him up. He is a little skinny for a puppy, so I'm like, you know what, I just need to feed him some, right? So that's what I was doing. And about the eighth day I've had him, he started regurgitating like nonstop for like 30 minutes. And I'm like, you know what, maybe he just ate too fast because he eats fast, like he inhales his food, literally. So I'm like, you know, he just ate too fast and he's got to like spit up. So I'm like trying to make him throw up. I'm sticking my finger down his throat. Like just throw up the food. Like you ate too much food. And an hour goes by, he finally throws it up. So I'm like, all right, good. Like he's going to feel better. Well, a little bit after that, he drinks water and he starts choking. Cannot breathe. Like his, his face, his lit tongue is like kind of going purple. He's got water coming out of his nose. And I'm like, all right, this is not right. Like I'm breathing in his face, blowing in his face, trying to stimulate his breathing. And I'm like, I need to take him to the vet right now. Like, I, like, what is going on? He's biting the snot out of my arm right now. Ow. Where's your bone? His bone must have fell. So I bring him to the vet. They do x-rays and we're like, you know what? Maybe he has something lodged in his throat. Like he ate some kind of, I don't know, who knows what he ate. Plastic, anything. And that's stopping, you know, water from going down. Well, needless to say, she showed me the x-rays, which I'll show you guys right here. That, the, what the red arrow is pointing to right now is his esophagus and it is full of food. Insane. I've never seen something like this in my life. By the way, if you guys are wondering, $105. Chase, to fill up my tank. So the vet I went to suggested that I go to the ER in Jupiter um, at the vet clinic to a specialist about this. So that's exactly what I did. Loaded him up, drove to Jupiter, took him there, and she confirmed that he definitely has ME, mega esophagus. Mm. Excuse me. I'm talking about you. And she was pretty much telling me like, this isn't a good case at all. Like it's severe. And she's like, you know, you have a couple options. You can give him medicine and get a Bailey chair where they sit up and eat so gravity can push the food down to the stomach. Um, and then it's only a matter of time until he gets aspirated pneumonia and he can or will or might die. So I'm distraught. I don't even know what to think because I'm just like, my whole world I feel like just like went upside down and I was like, just like, what the heck? Like how do I get this one little dog that has this condition and like with my lifestyle and everything like I just didn't know what to do and she was pretty much saying like listen like I'm not going to judge you if you do put him down today and I, that just broke me so I was like you know what I just I need a couple days to think about this she sent me home with some medicine and we go from there I got a third opinion the next morning can you not chew on my truck please and it was a young vet who actually works in Okeechobee, but he was substituting to the vet office in Fort Salerno that I go to. And I did an experiment. I went in there, I said, listen, I'm gonna feed him about, you know, a little bit before he gets an x-ray. Cause I wanna see exactly where the food is prior to the x-ray. So I went ahead and I fed him from an elevated position. Um, I tried to videotape it, but it was kind of hard with uh, what I had going on. So I fed him from the nose, like nose level. Shush, excuse me, stop it. I fed him from nose level, and so that way he wasn't eating from the ground up, he was like nose level, so it was a little bit more elevated. I wanted to see like where the food was in his esophagus and stomach from there. 
So I fed him two small amounts in the morning, went to the vet around 11 o'clock, fed him elevated, and he got an x-ray about 10 to 15 minutes after. It was a beautiful x-ray, everything was clear. So I was like, okay, well that's good news. We tried another experiment. This time, we fed him like normal, a normal dog eating off the ground, and they flipped him over and x-rayed him three times. Boom, boom, boom. 30 seconds, a minute after, and I think a minute and 30 seconds after he ate. And all the food was still in the esophagus, so that told us that he definitely had this esophagus issue. So now where do I go from here? I've made the executive decision after thinking about it for a few days on what to do. Um, I do have a week's worth of medicine just in case I do need it. However, I'm trying not to use any medicine because I'm just uh, kind of a firm believer of kind of like letting things go as they go and maybe he can somehow develop a little bit more strength in those muscles. I don't know. I'm, me and my mom are doing a lot of research on it and I mean he will have this the rest of his life don't get me wrong I'm not saying he's gonna like cure himself um, I have been praying for a miracle though but I'm just going to feed him elevated I'm gonna watch him obviously hold him um, if he makes it to get bigger I will get him a Bailey chair and have him sit up in that and eat because in my eyes I'm like listen I'm gonna have to feed this dog anyway like who cares if he just got to sit up and eat it's the same thing as throwing food down on the ground for him so I take three extra minutes to make sure he's comfortable that's fine with me I know I probably have like 10 minutes of footage explaining to you guys what's going on but that's what's going on so he's sleeping in the front seat right now all right so I'm gonna go drop him off and then we are gonna head to the keys I get a load of the boat a load of the good dive gear and everything um, maybe I'll just make this his own video honestly just kind of an update on what's going on maybe I'll do that there's a police officer right there. Oh, hello. All right. I'll see y'all when I get to my dad's. I will see you in a couple days, okay? Okay? Finley. All right, so I just dropped Finley off at my dad's house. Where are you at? I set up his crate, his water bowl. I showed him how to feed him and everything. So should be pretty simple for the most part. Finley, what's going on? What is this? Everything is so new to him right now. I did bring Finley over here a couple days ago just so he was a little bit familiar with the area, but it's only gonna be two days, so hopefully he can handle it. <laughs> he should be good to go. Okay. We just had to rush and pack everything for the keys. The kids are in the back seat, Blue Gabe's driving. We got spear guns, rods, reels, our gator coolers. We got bean bags. We got food, we got cameras, laptops, everything we need to go on a two day trip. All right. We're ready. Let's go to the Keys. Y'all ready? Mm hmm. Now I'm really for a two hour drive. You mean the seven hour drive? It's a five hour drive. made it here to Key West and the roosters and the chickens are crowing. Jake, do your best rooster voice. Uh, that's like a, a turkey rooster. Oh yeah, that's a turkey. <laughs> you go. Oh, I just went horse. <laughs> we sound like a whole flock of chickens. <laughs> I cannot do it. Hey, are you Key West Waterman? <laughs> Key West Waterman. So we're making a quick pit stop at the boat. We're just going to lock up our rods and spear guns. Then we're going to go relax, check into the hotel, unpack, unwind, and get some dinner. We're on the second floor. Wait, up again? Yeah. We just got to our hotel, the Marriott Beachside, or the Beachside Marriott. 
it's a pretty gorgeous hotel. We've stayed here multiple times before. Just climbing up some stairs, unloading the truck, and then we're gonna go get some food. I'm hungry. You're hangry. Look at the the kids got the easy stuff, the pillows, the bl hey, can we not drag the blankets on the dirty floor, please? Thanks. Why is these numbers not adding up? What number are we? It says 624. Well, 624 is this way. Oh. <laughs> Just gotta look for the signs. Oh. All right, open that door. I, make me just crawl. Oh, we gotta get some lights on in here. Well, dang, this is a sweet place. So, is this the best room you ever had? This is probably one of the nicest hotels I've ever stayed at. A light switch. Beautiful full kitchen. <laughs> look, some Jake light. just said, look at the bathtub. Oh, yeah, the bathtub's the impressive part. Gorgeous Wait, room. Let me see it's, it's a hot tub. It's a hot tub and a bathtub. Look, look at that bathtub. I mean, I'll take a bath yeah, in the shower. Look at the shower. It's so funny because when I was a kid, I remember going into hotel rooms and just like running all over the place and like it's just the coolest thing ever. I have no idea why, but it is. The best part is the kids got their own room. The fancy thing. There we go. You know what's fancy when the lights are on. This is the kids' room. All right, y'all, you can jump on this bed. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wish me luck guys. Wish me luck. Open sesame. Look how little they are. We're about to sit down and eat dinner here in Key West, but I had to make the walk all the way down the boardwalk to view the gorgeous sunset. Sunsets are probably my most favorite thing in this world because I like taking the time to just unwind at the end of the day. <sighs> kind of like meditation, but we're gonna enjoy some Key West food and we will see you guys on the next video. We're here in Key West we're going to be going spear fishing, fishing, we're just going to be exploring. So stay tuned for the next couple videos. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.